Welcome to my channel The instructions for segregation of duty or of duties rules responsibilities like SOT for Oracle Cloud So this is our topic in this video uh, Also, I need to mention here that this instructions is not only for Oracle Cloud is not only for Oracle system it's applicable for any systems to how to segregation how to make segregate of the rules of the duties for your users in your organization so let's start to know what about the SOD as you know that overview of segregation of duty the basic concept underlying of SOD is that no employee or group should be in a position both to perpetrate and to conceal errors or fraud in the normal course of their duties. SOD separate rules and responsibility to ensure that users don't have conflicting rules. What is the conflicting rules? Later we will know more about what is the conflicting rules. Importance of, S of SOD areas from the consideration that giving a single employee complete control of a process or an asset can expose an organization to risk. For effective SOD, the recording function, solarization function, as its custody function and reconciliation reporting or audit function should be separated among employees rather than belonging to one employee. SOD is a critical to effective internal control as it reduces the risk of both erroneous and inappropriate actions. I know that in most of our organizations we don't have enough employees to give or to make a separate employees and assign separate rules or duties to them but as soon as you can make a separate among employees rather than to assign these duties or more of more than one responsibility to one employee it will be better the principle of SOD must be considered when designing and defining job duties processes and control procedures must be implemented to segregate duties among employees through an effective oversight of activities and transactions these segregations need to be reinforced by ensuring that the IT system access is aligned to employees, job responsibilities, and it doesn't result in them having access to perform conflicting activities. To ensure that appropriate system access is assigned and maintained, review of the rules and responsibilities within your organizations which should be performed periodically and the necessary corrective actions should be taken as required so from period to period you have to again recheck the duties the responsibilities what is responsibilities added what is responsibilities is disabled and re uh, remake or reshape again the sod of your employees so what is the main purpose of SOD is to ensure that users don't have conflicting rules if we talk about the principles and success factors to ensure effective control over the SOD you have to following categories of duties or responsibilities are considered incompatible and must be separated for example initiating and or recording transactions processing function like preparing source document invoice BO etc or approving or authorizing function for approval of invoice approval for PO etc custody of assets whether directly or indirectly like receiving for laptop or whatever 
verification or reconciliation or audit, creating, updating master records, and granting access authorization to the systems. This is like a duties or responsibilities, some of them of SOD. Appropriate governance should be in place to monitor and report SOD conflicts. Exceptions and remediation governance should include the relevant stakeholders who will be part of the governance meetings, frequency of meetings, agenda, reporting for the meeting, and escalation matrix. Exception means in during make or shape the SOD like the relationship between employees and the duties, you may face some exceptions and also we will give you or I will give you some exception example later in this video. The key success factor for effective SOD management that adopt a top-down risk-based approach to balance control effort to assist risk level tolerance, focus control on risks that matter, clearly defined rule for performing monitoring, exception reporting and remediation activities, and a clearly defined rule catalog, identification for of employees for governance rules, regular monitor and reporting of SOD violations, prompt remediation of the violation to contain the impact of the same, awareness and continuous training of the business users, Deployment of an automated tool for proactive monitoring and controls including KPIs and reporting. Defining master or MDM as a master data management rules and policies should be in place before SOD is implemented. And considering physical or transactional business controls on ground as primary drivers and system SOD controls. Keep the SOD rule book and its risk rating current as per business needs. Why we need to implement the SOD to control the risk, to keep or make the risk is low instead of medium instead of high, because once the audit came to the organizations, the very thing they need to check what is their responsibilities, what is the conflicting rules, where is the employees which have more than one conflicting rules at the same time. Key as SOD policies for design and deployment, responsibilities for initiating business transactions, approval, verification and custody of assets must be separated from each other. Considering having at least two people involved within each process sub-process, control design must consider the possibility of co collusion which when two or more parties agree to commit fraud or gain unfair advantage by compromising a process execution. Consider having two people involved in critical or high risk controls also, we will give you some example of this high risk and the medium risk and low risk later. Responsibilities for modifying creating master data records are normally separated from other responsibilities. So you have to make a separate responsibilities between modifying, creating, configurations, uh, record the transactions, approval, blah, blah, blah. Rules and responsibilities must be clearly defined and established before to assign or to make or to restrict the conflict between employees and responsibilities. You have first to define SOD like rules and the responsibilities before going to assign it to the users or the employees because as I told you you have to make a separate in these responsibilities some of the for responsibilities to modifying some of them for creating some of them to configuration some of them to assigning and so on establishing a system control environment for assigning new responsibilities whereby appropriate control is in place in some cases for example in visions uh, you can in HCM, you can assign the rules to employees 
uh, depends on the position name, depends on whatever. So once you define these employees as an employee in HCM, and uh, you can assign the rules. For example, if his duties like accountant, so the system will assign the rules or duties of accountant to these employees once he defined automatically without any uh, manual uh, assigning and so on. All requests that pass through must satisfy all SOD rules. Common shared access or default users login must be restricted. User must not share their password with any other user. I face this in all of the organizations that one users is going or on vacation or whatever on leave and during that he can share his password with his colleague to continue the work or whatever and this is must be not shared <coughs> sod automation and system enablement SOD rules need to be reinforced by ensuring that the IT system access is aligned to employees' job responsibilities and doesn't result in them having access to perform conflicting activities. The guidelines of these or responsibilities assigned requests should only be raised through system. The system will only allow to request for responsibilities that either don't create conflict or that create low conflict, either no conflict or low conflict as a low risk. Once the user submits the responsibility, it will go to for his or her immediate supervisor, the business owner of the responsibility. Once the request is approved, the user will be assigned the request responsibility automatically by system. Approval workflow must include in the following, as you know, user, supervisor business owner this is the cycle of the approvals to assign the responsibility to the users automatically additional rules which will be followed that in case the responsibility is not active in system for more than one year it will be made inactive and also the same for the users login if the user login is not active in the system more than one year, it will be made inactive in the systems. I think now in uh, Oracle that you have to uh, renew the password of the users every six months like this. What will the process covered under SOD? There are a lot of processes, one of them that procure to pay cycles cover requisition, sourcing, purchase order, contracting, acquire to retire as A2R, that this process cycle cover acquisition, depreciation, retirement of assets, order to cash, this process as a OTC, cycle covers the sales or goods, services, invoicing, receipt of payment, payroll accounting process contains Process for payroll, processing for defining employee, run payroll, blah blah blah. Record to report. These process cycles cover reporting of financial transactions recorded in sub ledgers. System configuration access. This process contains details of configuration related processes. So in this video, I will talk about of these processes like P2P or to C. E to R, payroll, uh, R to R, system configuration access. Overview for process first of B2B. As you know, the B2B is, it's maybe different from one organization to other, blah, 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 but uh, there are a lot of common uh, definitions, common cycles for B2B. As you see here that vendor management, you have to define vendors as uh, suppliers investigate vendor what is supplier master management monitor vendor, uh, vendor performance product catalog identify create new items catalog procurement planning for what is the requirement contracting accounting control budget tender proof scoring blah 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 purchase of goods like pr approved pr 
generate or make a manual PO, then approve it, then start to make a receipt, movement of stock, receive, inventory adjustment. You can after that make a return, verification, costing. After that you can create or cancel invoice matching or either two way, three way, four way. Invoice hold and uh, release the hold, approve the invoice. Uh, confirm AB data against vendor master data. In some cases, this is outside the systems that you can include also the processes which is performed outside the systems. Bank transfer and print check, process payment, bank reconciliations, and whatever if you have any other system for payment. So let's start by the overview of the SOD. As you see here, we will talk about here for supplier management. What is the SOD violation? What is the risk categorization, high, low, medium, and conflicting function? For example, if process payment, here the SOD violation that users with create suppliers function may update the bank details for the vendors and create payment. So it's very, very high. It's very high what to give the same users the two responsibilities to create a supplier and make a payment because what because in this case maybe he create suppliers and update bank details of the vendor and create payment to unauthorized bank account this is very high for create payments ability to create payment against validated and approved invoices in some cases maybe he update the bank details of the suppliers to his bank details or whatever so it's very high risk for example, approve invoice, user with access to transaction function should not be given access to alter the master data files. Because what? This is low because ability to approve vendor invoices entered by AB accounted. Again, it's not logic to give the same users to enter the invoice at the same time he approves the invoice. Approve BO or release, user may create efficacious vendors and approve purchase order for the same. Again, its ability to approve purchase orders as bears the assigned limit entered by PO buyer. It's very low. To create and cancel invoice, users with create supplier and the create invoice function may create efficacious supplier and the initiate payment to those suppliers by creating invoice. It's very high for create invoice because it will be ability to enter invoice received from the vendor and the ability to cancel the validate or invalidate invoices in case of incorrect entry other system issues. For generate BOs, user access to transaction function should be not be given access to alter the master data files for the suppliers. This is very high because its ability to create standard purchase order blanket purchase agreement Etc. And also for bank transfer, user with access or create supplier functions may be update again the bank details for the vendor. It's very high. Why? Conflicting function that ability to bring chic for submission to vendors for payment created by payment accounted. The other thing that process payment again that users access to transaction function should not be given to alter the master data files for the suppliers invoice hold and uh, release it users with access to transaction function should not be given again to alter the master data files for the suppliers this too is very too high as risk categorizations because it will give him the ability to record the cancellation reversal of payment and the ability to release invoice hold created by system based on various criteria. If we talk about contracting, again contracting master maintenance, create contract clauses in general involves the input of a specific department, therefore user approving contract clause should be different from user approving the contract. Again, as you see here, that it must be like two people, not one only, because this is conflicting, is very low as a risk, ability to approve contracts clauses. Generate BOs, creating an approval contract and the contract clauses is a legal term function and should be segregated from procurement functions. 
again ability to create bo blanket bo agreement blah 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 for the approved bo or leases creating and approving contract and contract clauses is a legal term function should be segregated from procurement functions so our goal or our aim is to segregate the rules either approval creation whatever try to segregate it the duties between the employees contracting master maintenance the same maker and checker conflict user creating document should not be allowed to approve the same like the invoice a b invoice b b o p r and so on it's like a conflict rules if we talk about create a new item if we talking about inventory verifications user with authority to create update master should not be allowed with transaction recording like the suppliers it's not by logic or its conflict rules to give the same users to update or create item with transaction recording again movement of stock user with authority to create update master should not be allowed with transaction recording access inventory costing it's also the access to transaction functions should not be given access to alter the master data files of the items receive and record receipts of goods user may cooperate with suppliers to create fictitious items and create an ordered receipt for the same this will later transform into payment and will lead to financial loss all of this like medium because here you give the same employees access to alter the master data files and to create update the transaction and approve also the transactions again for generate bo or leases users with access to transaction function should not be given access to alter the master data files raise pr also user to transactions like to create pr he must not given access to alter the master data files for the items and again for the approved bo or releases so this is the mean to make segregate of duties to try to restrict or try to uh, restrict the conflict of duties and try to make the risk a low not a medium not a high for raising requisitions supplier master management that again it is the same transactions it not being given to alter the master data create new items again and counting controls and again approval requisitions make random checker conflict generate and approve If we talk about create and cancel invoices, again, user with create requisition and create invoices function may create unmatched invoices requisition made by himself or other favored employees. When it comes to case where prepayment are involved, user may change the payment term to pre or prepone the payment. This is ability to enter invoices received from the vendor in the Oracle systems. Again, process payment. User with create requisition and create payment may override supplier payment term normals and prioritize the supplier payment for requisition made by himself as our favorite employee. It's very low risk categorization. Approval requisition again user can create approve their own requisition thus resulting into creation of unwarranted requisitions so take care because it's risk here degree is a medium for generate bo create new items again user may create fictitious items and the purchase order for the same for accounting control, user with the authority to control approval authorization limits may change the limit and approve the purchase order. If you give him the accounting control to change the limit, either increase or decrease, whatever. So it's recommended to keep period controls separate from users recording approvals and transactions as user may enter backdated future transaction in the absence of other controls. Recommended also to keep it Controls separated as also 
for the approving transactions in the absence of other controls i think it's the same for here open and close periods and open and close period for either inventory or purchasing for the inventory it will be low for the purchasing it will very p the risk is medium because ability to open and close purchasing period to control the recording of purchasing document like bo blanket releases etc and here ability to open and close inventory periods to include the inventory related transaction like item receipt return move order so as you see here that the risk in the category edition sometime high sometime low sometime mediums so if you need to try or to focus on the high then you can try to focus of the risk medium so by the end you can focus of the low risk or if you cannot so it will be like a low risk not like a high and the medium because again you can may say face a lot of limitations in employees limitations of uh, responsibilities limitation of the modules so in this case you try to achieve either 80 percent or 70 percent of applying sod in your organization so again vendor return and the inventory verification create and cancel invoices approve it's the same that sometimes you create fictitious uh, purchase order and the initial payment process by create invoices for the proof user may create fictitious purchase order and then initiate and also for the proof maker and the checker conflict for the create new items again user access to transaction function should not be given to alter the master data files for accounting control again authority to control approval authorization limits may change the limit for receive and generate and inventory verification the same and create and cancel invoice approve fictitious purchase order and then ship payment process by create invoice for the same it's also hot low approve the invoices allow a b b o and the invoice approval to the same users at the same time reduce an approval layer in the transaction again don't give access or rules to the same user to approve the bo and the same time approve the invoice for the process payment commit the company to fraudulent purchase contracts and initiate payment for unauthorized goods and service for managing contracts make and the checker conflict for create bo's creating an approval contract and contract clauses is a legal term function and approve again and the bo releases for identifying accounting and inventory and inventory in adjustments that user conflicting inventory may manipulate the account and create and approve adjustment to hide what the same to match it with the inventory snapshot and here as you see that the risk is a medium that user may collaborate with suppliers to create fictitious item and create an ordered receipt for the same they may be later transformed into payment and may lead to financial loss again for the vendor return for create and cancel invoices and accounting control for the accounting control for period open and close purchasing it might be control may allow creation of fictitious purchase order and receipts for inventory recommendatory to keep period control separate from user recording approval transactions movement of stock also again to keep period controls separate for user recording approval transactions and receive and record receipts and vendor returns all of these as you see for physical inventory inventory transaction receives and return is very medium risk and for create and cancel invoice is very high risk inventory costing the same that identify create new items or generate bo or approve all of them is low but instead of users with access to transaction function should not be given access to alter the master data file it's a common of a lot of sod violation 
and again receives and approve and generate all of the same the same and for create and cancel invoice users with both invoices and the payment options may create features invoice and pay for the same it's very very high bank transfer user with both invoices and the payment options may create features invoices and pay for the same very very high receive and record receipts user may create again receipts uh, fake and initiate the payment it's very very high for invoice hold user may create erroneous invoices and release it any hold very very medium and accounting user with impact journal functions may perform unauthorized imported journals for AR, AB, payroll, CM and so on. Process as an invoice again users with release invoice hold function may process invoices without the consent of invoicing team and be the same and create and cancel invoice process payment bank transfer and assets capitalization as you see here that using have user having access to approve invoices as well as asset function may capitalize costs which should have been expenses of thus resulting into incorrect presentation of financial statement so as per standard sod rule raise requisition and invoice approval functions should be segregated However, in the federal entities, usually the requester is the one of the approval in order to confirm material or service has been received. As compensating control, there are two additional approval in the approval process to ensure invoices details are correct. Hence, as an exception, proof invoices and raise requisition have not been called a violation in this table. As I told you, some sometime you face some exceptions like this case so this not being called as a violation for if you have to additional approval in the approval to ensure that the invoices details are correct for the approving for invoicing and raise requisition it will not be called a violation and bank transfer make around the checker of elect process payment user with both these functions may create unauthorized payment and reinstate the bank balances by creating bank transfer. For maker and checker user creating a document, it will be very high. For process payment, it will be low. This is again for procure to pay, for process payment, accounting, inventory. And this is for budget. Again, for approval invoice, user with ability to define or enter budget should not be allowed to enter or approve budget consumption transactions. For approve, pay or release, user with ability to define or enter budget should not be allowed to enter or approve budget consumption transactions. Again, if the users with ability to enter budget should not be allowed to enter or approve budget and this is for either can create cancel invoice for process payment BOs create cancel invoice process payment payment and receipt because as you see here for the receipt user with ability to define budget should not be allowed to enter or approve the actual transactions because all of them here as a medium risk the second one is acquire to retire this e to r for our assets first of all that manage expenditure planning manage expenditure planning approval manage assets accounting after that you capitalize you make transfer manage physical verification make a retirement impairment asset re-evaluation for the period close you run depreciation uh, the depreciation recording and the transfer accounting entries to the GO. It's very simple that manage acquisition and monitoring if the capital planning budgeting team is responsible for managing assets function then there is a risk of budget numbers being manipulated to allow higher asset acquisition it's very very medium to create assets retire assets change asset assignment change assets category change location for single asset for manage acquisition for the approved invoice may result into approval of inappropriate asset acquisition 
period close run the precision create numerous journals entries and therefore it should be run only once all assets are added if this authority is provided to user responsible for adding the assets there is a high possibility of numerous additional journal entries period close as its closing is highly critical activity as oracle assets doesn't allow reopening the close period therefore assets period close function should be independent of other assets function take care of assets closing because once you close the assets period it will not reopen again asset transfer mass transaction access provides the users with a bar to retire transfer the class assets in the assets book this makes mass transaction function very critical therefore it's recommendatory to keep it separate from regular assets function Manage physical, this is users access to assets workbench as its physical inventory access may retire lost or stolen assets without any approval. Again, it's very, very high. For create purchase order, recommendatory to keep procurement function independent of financial functions like create purchase order, create invoices, adding assets, retire assets, blah, blah, blah. Manage acquisition as a create requisition recommended again procurement function and create invoice user having to create invoice as well as create assets may create vicious assets and hide the same by creating fixed assets counting controls that assets management and general ledger function for creating of journals may cause recording of incorrect adjustment to asset data for the period close, assets period close is a highly critical. So don't doesn't or Oracle assets doesn't allow reopening the close period. For accounting control, also assets period close and general ledger functions for creating of journals may cause recording of incorrect adjustment of asset data. From this violation or from this SOD or the risk or conflicting functions on descriptions you can before that again try to build the rules responsibilities the duties after that you will start to apply the sod and sign the, these responsibilities to the employees for the order to cash as you see we have first to start manage customer record the manage invoicing is our customer invoice credit note debit note blah 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 payment and receipts after that, you can manage period closing and manage accounting. This is the SOD rules book of order to cash. If we start also SOD violations that manage invoicing and receipts, user with access to transaction should not be given to alter the master data of the customer. User may collaborate with the customer and extend the payment term for the customer. User with access to transaction functions shall not be given access to alter the master data files. Again. It's not logic to give the same users to create the customers and to create transaction to create the customers or update the customer data and create the receipts. It's a very, very, very high risk. For the customer invoicing, managing accounting, again, recommended to keep buried control separate for user recording approval transactions. User may collaborate with the customer and extend the payment term. User with import journal functions may perform unauthorized import journals. If invoicing and receipt are with the same users, then the user may collaborate with the customers and manipulate the receipt against their invoices. Payment and receipt, if invoicing and remittance creation access, user may collaborate again with the customers and create vicious remittances. Again, if invoicing and the customer receipts are with the same users, then the user may collaborate with the customers. User authorized for creating or approval invoices or payment or receipts should not be allowed to path or approve adjustment transaction in GL as it can what impact effectiveness of reconciliation. In cases where retail customers are serviced by point of sale as a POS systems, create customers and customer invoices is valid transactions and not an exception. If retail customers are serviced by BOS system. 
Again, for the customer, master for payment and receipts, user may collaborate with the customers, manage accounting, user with import journal function may perform unauthorized import journals. For bank reconciliations, user may collaborate with the user to enter vicious receipts and cover it by reconciling the same in bank. And if invoicing and customer receipts are with the same users, the users may collaborate again with the customers and budget user with ability to define budget should not be allowed to enter or approve actual transactions. Post journals user with authority to enter or approve budget should not be allowed to enter or post or approve budget consumption transaction. For manager reporting, period end user may make unauthorized adjustment to invoices, credit notes to proceed with period closure. It's very, very medium risk. And as you see here, if invoicing and customer receipts are with the same users, it's very, very high risk. So try as soon as you can to make segregation of duties between the employees. Payroll accounting, as you know, that first of thing, you have to maintain payroll or employee informations, maintain payroll informations, run payroll and transfer. This is the SOD rules book of payroll accounting. Again, for define information payroll, user with both those functions have the power to create fictitious employees and run their employee, the very, very medium. User with both these functions have also the power for the run payroll with the maintain employee. Also, it's a very, very medium risk. User to maintain employee information and transfer salaries it will be to create fictitious employees and update the file to be sent to bank to make salary payment to such fictitious employees. For define payroll information, user to define or maintain employee and with define also payrolls, it has the power to create fictitious employees and run their payroll. It's very, very medium. The users with this functions as a payroll information and employee job and the positions have to power to update favored employees salaries and run their, their payroll, modify salaries and modify their informations. It gives the user power to update favored employees salaries, very, very high transfer for salary files with defined payroll. It's give the user power again to update favored employees salaries and update the file to send to bank, resulting in additional payment. And the run payroll, again with the run payroll and the fine employees, is very, very medium to give him to create fake employees or a fake employees. The fine and maintain employees with medium because it will govern or give the user power to update favorites, all of them to update or to create or uh, modify the employee salaries and transfer it to the bank. All of them medium high because here we're talking about salaries, we're talking about the money, we're talking about that our balance in the bank or the organization balance in the bank. So it's very, or the categorization here will be from high to medium. As you see here that transfer salaries files if you having a user external systems or oracle systems is also maker and the checker conflict user creating the document should not be allowed to approve the same the record to report to journal creation enter journals budget blah 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 or other gl activities import allocation and period close as you see here that enter journal budget user with the authority to enter or approve or budget should not be allowed to enter or approve budget consumption. It's very, very high. Enter journal and the post journals. It's again, user creating the document should not be allowed to post the same. Approve the journals again, maker and the checker. User creating document should not be allowed to approve. Period control, user with the authority enter or post budget should not be allowed to control period opening and closing to ensure that transactions are not cleared by the period close personnel. 
approve invoice again user authorized for creating approval invoice sub ledger function should not be allowed to pass on approval adjustment transaction in gl and also for the po if we talk about create and cancel invoice the same process payment generate po's and payment and receipts for the budget again that users with authority to enter budget should not be allowed to enter or approve budget consumption post journals again make maker and conflict and the checker conflict prove journals again maker and the checker and the period control by the end that you have to make a segregate or segregate the duties of employees whatever the employee created not it must not have the power to approve and vice versa create and cancel and for the post journals again don't give the user to enter and the post journals don't give him to enter journals for budget and the post these journals don't give the user to authority to enter the journals and control the period to close and uh, open because in some cases once you close the periods maybe the same users reopen it again and they make some adjustments and again reclose it again manage acquisition and monitoring and tracking user with authority to enter or approve the budget shall not be allowed to enter or approve actual transactions either assets depreciation assets or revenge capitalization mass transactions assets physical inventory and so on again for the approved journals with inter journals don't make it for the same users for the inter journal and approved journals either for actual or budget or period control or approve invoice approve invoice that user with authority to enter budget should not be allowed to enter or approve budget consumption transactions for the period control user with the authority to import journals should not be allowed to control period opening and closing to ensure transactions are not cleared by the period close personal without appropriate discussion and again enter journals with allocation of expenses and the budget that the mass allocation is cost allocation function and should be used only by specific employees once all balances are finalized again for period control for either enter journals it's not give the same users to enter journals and they monitor or control the period either open or closed or future blah 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 either for import journal approve journal post journal either also enter journal for the intercompany transactions for the period control recommendatory to keep period controls separate from user recording or approval transactions as user may enter backdated or future transactions in the absence of other control very very medium for agis if we talk about some system configuration access for set of financial ledger receivables payable cash management assets tax purchasing inventory uh, other like users responsibilities menus system configuration access can allow users to have conflicting rules the following principles should be followed that non-organization employees working on projects should not have access to production organization support team should not have access to perform any transactions on production in instance organizations and users should not have access to perform configuration change on production so the followed activities should be segregated among individuals and shall follow the organization change management procedures that develop or change to any business process you have to follow the organization change management procedures or also migrate or deploy the change from deployment to production if we talk about uh, setup financial for inter journals user with access transaction function should not be given access to alter system configurations either for enter or import journals because it's very 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 high risk again user with setup general ledger no must not be raise purchase acquisitions and enter journals for actuals and approve journals 
because as you see here it's very very high risk again also for the either post or import or enter also journal for budget or customer invoicing crediting because it's very very high to give the same users to make or change the configurations and import the journals or create the journals for setup bubbles again it's not don't give the users to set up bubbles functions where it is create and cancel invoice with process payment either bank transfer and generate bo's because as you see almost of them here is very very high risk because it will give the users to alter the system configuration with the same time to enter or to manage or manipulate the data of the transactions and the payments and the reconciliation and bank transfer cash management bank transfer or post payment again don't give the same users to alter the same configuration of cash management with make bank transfer or print checks or process payment it's very very high also payment and receipts with setup receivables and the customers at very very high to give the same or both functions or responsibilities to the same user setup assets with both and journals is very very low manage acquisition monitoring and tracking is very very high either assets depreciation assets workbench capitalize mass transactions and assets physical inventory setup purchasing with creating is very very high create acquisition also create tenders scoring and supplier management all of them is very very high because as well ability to create standard purchase order and also create figures or ma manage the purchasing configuration options to generate uh, a fake BOs or create requisitions figures uh, purchase requisition tender blah 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 set up inventory again for the movement of stock or inventory verification adjustment receive and records and inventory returns with the sub inventory or again it's very very high risk to give the theme or the both to the same user without any segregation of duties again for all process either user or responsibilities users with access to transaction function should not be given access to alter system configurations also for the supplier management data for i supplier and procurement for raise br again it's very very high for any process for configurations with any process like create update transfer make invoice bo br receipts is very very high risk because in the same time the same users manipulate the configurations the same users can create update improve whatever the transaction for the setup tax, generate BOs with the setup tax, very very high, to give him alter system configurations, and also managing invoicing and receipts. For EGIS, the same, it's not allowed or it's not, it's the risk is very high to give the same users to set up EGIS with entering or recording intercompany transactions. So this is word to say that it's the concept of segregation of duties that if you have enough employees if you have a lot of employees if you have the ability to create segregation of duties this is the guide of these instructions to build it and to uh, conflict or to minimize the risks and to segregate of or to make the create of duties between or among with your employees thanks for watching